Beat Map Bat Rap! Welcome back to Beat Map Bat Rap episode 10, Deathwing vs. Tyranids. It's a rematch from our very first Beat Map Bat Rap. We're entering Tyranids turn 3. The very first thing we're going to do is see if the rest of the guys come on. Just need a 2 plus here. So the Gene Stealers and the Trigon will both be coming on the board. The Gene Stealers are going to run, but they actually managed to roll, I believe, a 3 for their run. So they're far away, unfortunately, from the enemy. So they're going to have to foot slog it a bit for the next couple of turns before they get to get into combat. And then the Trigon does a deep strike, and he gets exactly where he wants, right beside Samuel, where he'll hope to shoot him down. And then the Zone Thropes move up. They've actually done so good so far. They managed to take out one Vindicator. So hopefully they can take out the next one, because those Vindicators do a lot of damage when left unchecked. The Gene Stealers are running up, prepared to engage that Dreadnought. The other Gene Stealers are running up, prepared to engage the other Dreadnought. Dreadnoughts are tough even for Gene Stealers, though. And then, of course, we have our large group of Hormigants, who are going to run up as well to hopefully scrape some paint off of those land speeders. They have been moving pretty quick, so I'll need to roll sixes, but since they'll be charging, I'll have strength four, so I could do some glancing hits. And when you're doing as many hits as the Hormigants will be doing, you're hoping to get some in there. Hive Tyrant is going to be brave and move up to engage these ten Terminators and see what he can do. So first off, the Zone Thropes make both of their Psychic attacks, and then they both hit the Vindicator, and then they manage to get penetrating hits as well. I think one was a glancing, one was a penetrating. The glancing does nothing, and the penetrating rolls a six, and it explodes. It takes out a couple gene sealers with it, but it is gone. So that's two for two for the zone thropes. They've killed two vindicators, which is really, really good for them. The heavy venom cannon misses completely from the hive tyrant, and his psychic power did nothing as well. The trigon is going to open fire on Samuel, hoping to inflict some wounds, but unfortunately he just cannot roll very well today and Samuel makes all of his 3 plus saves. So we're just going to jump right into the assault phase. The Trigon unfortunately cannot assault yet, so hopefully he'll survive longer than his uh, his pal that died right when he jumped right into combat. So the Hormigons are moving up, Hive Tyrant engaging these Terminators on his own. And these Gene Stealers moving over to take on this Dreadnought, and then basically a mirror image on the other side as the other Gene Stealers moved in to take on the other Dreadnought. They also multi-assault into a speeder. As you can see here, as soon as one of them charges, the other ones can multi-assault as long as we stay in coherency, which you're going to see they are going to do. So we got two strong hits there from the Gene Stealers, hoping to take down as many vehicles as they can. So we're hitting the very first Dreadnought. Lots of attacks on the charge, strength 5 on the charge with rending that can do a lot of damage there. And make, so they make a lot of hits and they do a few rending which turn into some penetrating, which turns into an exploding Dreadnought, who unfortunately from his explosion takes uh, a lot of hits on the Gene Stealers, but only one of them goes down because of those explosions. The rest, or the other person, made their armor save. And the Gene Stealers are moving up. Now I realize I made a bit of a tactical mistake here. I should have had them consolidate into the trees to give them cover, but I move them up to the open, and you'll see next round, or next turn, why that was a mistake. So now we're going to hit this Dreadnought, get lots of sixes there, but then fail to do any damage to him. So now we're going to scrape at this land speeder and hope to hit him. Need sixes to hit. And then we got a six, and we managed to do a penetrating hit, which does stun it, so it will not be able to move or shoot next turn, which hopefully will mean I'll be able to take it down before I can get away. The Dreadnought hits back and does kill two Gene Stealers, who then lose combat by two and fail both armor saves, so he actually manages to kill four of that group of Gene Stealers. So not looking too good for those Gene Stealers. Hormigons are swarming the land speeder, hoping to do some damage, but fail to do anything, and so do not die, or do not kill it. The Hive Tyrant opens fire on the, or starts hitting the Terminators, and only does two wounds, but lucky for me, he fails both of his invulnerable saves, so two Terminators actually go down. And that's actually very good, because now there's only two Lightning Claws left to hit back, and they're only strength four, although they do get to reroll their two wound. A Belial is one of them, of course. He gets lots of attacks. They do manage to take another wound off of the Hive Tyrant, but he does survive. They do lose combat, but he does make his armor safe, so he doesn't lose any more wounds. So that was surprising for me that the Hive Tyrant survived that. I thought he was going to die for sure, but those two lucky misses on his um, invulnerable saves uh, really saved the day for me. So his land speeders are moving into position to open fire on the Hormigants. Dreadnought moves in position to attack the Gene Stealers, as do the Terminator squad that is not engaged with the Hive Tyrant. And then Samuel decides to get brave and engage all the Hormigants on his own. So we'll see what he's able to do. So the firing begins, 
and the gene sealers start to fall. Now, this is what I was talking about, how they should have ran into, uh, run into cover, because they would have at least gotten their 4 plus cover saves. Instead, they're just going to get massacred by all the fire. If you really think about it, there's a Dreadnought with Stormbolter and his Twin Lake Glass Cannon. We've got all the Stormbolters of the Space Marines and then the, the Missile Launchers as well. There's just not hardly any of the Gene Steelers left by the end of that. So there's only two left that they're going to enter the Assault Phase. So he opens fire on the Hormigants, who do get cover saves and make some of them, keeping them alive as much as possible. And this group does not get cover saves because they're wide in the open against the other land speeders. So he manages to pick off a lot of them. And then Samuel himself takes a shot and it scatters off, hits the speeder but does not damage it, and manages to take, and only rolls a one against the Hormagon, so does not destroy it. So he charges into combat there, as do the Terminators against these Gene Stealers, as does the one Dreadnought as well, as if they stand a chance. So I do get to hit them first, so my Gene Stealer does manage to hit and rend, but then doesn't really manage to do anything after that, so it only manages to shake the Dreadnought. And these other Gene Stealers will attack the Terminators, and he does no damage. And so they hit back. I don't even think we rolled here, I think I just decided to pull them off, because with all those hits, there's no way that they're going to survive. So those Terminators consolidate into the cover, just like what I should have done. And that way, if he gets hit by the AP-1 weapons of the zone throws, he'll still get his cover save, which is nice for him. So my Gene Stealers are now attacking the Dreadnought, and they do manage to do a few, a few uh, rending hits, but roll really low on their D3 roll for their rending, and only manage to shake the Dreadnought a bit. So he hits them back, manages a wound, kills one of them. They fail combat, of course, because he doesn't take wounds, and another one dies as well. So that combat continues. The Hive Tyrant gets to hit. Now, we make, made a mistake here. The Hive Tyrant should be hitting at the same time as Belial, but it didn't really matter. He took out the Terminator, not Belial, who wouldn't have been able to hit him first anyways, and Belial does not kill him here, so it wouldn't have mattered too much. Samuel and the Hormigant sit at the same time, all at initiative 5. He unfortunately is not able to do too much, he only wounds 2. And then they of course mass their attacks back at him, getting a lot of attacks, probably about 30 or 40 or something like that, I'm not sure how many were left at that point. And he fails one of his saves, and so he actually only takes one wound from all those attacks. So I fail by one, but I do make the armor save. So the end of round three, you can see things are still a little undecided. My Gene Stealers are way out of position on this side as they are doing their best to come into combat. The other Gene Stealers got completely annihilated on the one side. Samuel is surrounded by Hormigants, who will hopefully be able to kill him this turn. And the Hive Tyrant actually managing to take out that squad of Terminators on his own, and then engaging Belial in a one-on-one -on -one combat. It's very epic combat there. The Dreadnought holding off these Gene Stealers round after round. The land speeders moving around, being a big pain by shooting down as many Hormigons as they can. Current score is 6 to 5 for the Tyranids. You're going to have to wait for round 4 to see exactly what happens. Again, post in the comments who you think is going to win based on what you see in this turn. Visit miniwargaming.com to see our videos one month early!